All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Ryan Grimm, joined here by Todd Bullinger, a Republican political consultant. We're here to talk about Donald Trump, James Comey, and our descent into fascism, or however <laughs> <laughs> you'd, li you'd like to call it, whatever you'd like to call it. If you have any questions uh, about the, the Comey affair, Comey Alago, whatever they're calling it right now, uh, put them in the comment section. Eric will uh, re read them out to either, either uh, Todd or I. The Facebook as Facebook, yes. We're not going to be reading YouTube comments uh, until later when we'll, when we'll go in and be sad about everything that you, you said about us. So, uh, Todd, first of all, where were you when you heard about the, the Comey firing? What was your initial reaction when you, when you heard um, this? I think I believe I was driving my kids right. home uh, from practice, mm -hmm. and my first thought was it's about time. Uh, it was something uh, that the, I, I thought was coming long, long time coming, and it should have happened much earlier. Uh, but you know, given the, the political vibrations that he's mm -hmm. created, you know, since the summer, uh, nobody really trusted him anymore, and people were starting to question his, his sort of presence and footprint in, in the political structure. Uh, it was time for him to leave. Right. Why do you th why do you think Trump ended up making the decision? What do you think triggered it for him? That, that's a right. difficult thing. Right. To that's a difficult thing to predict. It could be something right. as simple as him seeing his testimony, which probably my take is he saw his testimony mm -hmm. uh, in front of the Senate earlier in the week, and when he said he was queasy about what he was doing and everything like. See, I th I think that's it too, in the sense that he took that as how could you be queasy about the fact that I am president when I am the greatest president in American history? You should be deeply proud of the role that you played is the way that I think Trump was heard that comment from him. It, it could be that, I, and it gets back to what I said earlier. I mean, partly, I mean, I don't think many people can name the la last FBI director. I've lived here for 22 years. I can remember Mueller. I can remember yeah. Sessions uh, uh, under Clinton. Just re I just cracked my memory again because he was fired by Clinton. Yeah. And that, that's something that's in the ether. But this guy has really, his footprint has gotten pretty large for someone who's the head of the FBI. It's supposed to be a quiet organization. Mm -hmm. And I, I suspect is, you know, he was watching that hearing and Comey was saying, oh, it made me queasy and all his mealy mouth stuff that was coming out of him, mentioned the Uma Abedin uh, emails and he thought to himself, I'm done with this guy. All right. And, and I, then, that decision probably happened there and, you know, the rest is history. What do you think happens to the investigation now? You know, my experience with the, with the Justice Department, which is pretty extensive, <laughs> uh, having worked for Jack Abramoff, uh, mm. you know, it's probably not going anywhere. Um, you know, there are career people working on this, and it is pretty pretty well divided off with from the political side of things. When you say career people, you mean in, in justice or in FBI? Yeah, in, in, within the Justice Department. Right. I mean, the career prosecutors over there, uh, and I'm not entirely sure this is in a bunch of different right. sections of the Justice Department, uh, which probably helps the longevity of, 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 it, of it continuing, um, whether it's in public integrity or in the intelligence section mm -hmm. and, and, and whatnot. Um, I, I can't see it stopping. Uh, anytime soon, and it certainly won't be because this, this uh, you know, Comey right. got fired. Right. So, so far, we, we, we have a good sense that Michael Flynn is caught up in this. Uh, he has been offering <clears throat> to testify before members of the Senate or elsewhere in exchange for some type of immunity, which has so far been rejected. Can you t tell us a little bit about why you think it's being rejected. Yeah, it's a pretty common thing when uh, sort of political controversies like this happen that are have criminal implications and the reason why he's seeking immunity from the hill even if it was limited immunity is because if there's a sealed indictment or something along those lines within the grand jury that they're looking at if he's given immunity on any one of these subjects and he goes and testifies he's safe correct but what happens then the prosecutor then loses those tools mm -hmm. because congress had given him immunity now technically they can get around that but the way it's been practiced over the years, uh, if you remember the Iran-Contra affair mm -hmm. with, with Oliver North, he was given limited immunity. And uh, in Congress, he was, he was prosecuted and convicted, but he appealed right. on that in, in one. And so he argued that a lot of what he said before Congress somehow was used against him. Correct. His, do you think that's – was that true? Or did it, did it not even matter? You know, in, I don't know. The, I don't know the genesis of the practice, right. but it, it, I can tell you this from my experience huh. in, in going through the the Abramoff incident was that the Justice Department put in both ways actually is that they put heavy hands on the Hill not to give immunity to anyone to testify. Okay, because it, it really handicaps them and it essentially kills the investigation. Right. Did you do that? Did you offer any? Um, did you get an offer of immunity no. to testify to the no. Hill or anything no. like that? I didn't testify to the Hill. Okay, um, so let's talk about the the new guy, McCabe. So this is, uh, 
He's the new acting FBI director. What do we know about him? You know, not a whole heck of a lot. We know a little bit about his wife. Uh, his wife was a, a Democratic politician in Virginia who ran uh, and, and uh, lost. Um, he, she got a sizable amount of money from Terry McAuliffe, who oddly is under investigation by the FBI. Uh, <laughs> Always. Seems like. uh, and, you know, I saw a story that broke yesterday uh, is that uh, similar to what we're seeing with Flynn and what initially got him in trouble is his disclosure forms is that Mr. McCabe did not put anything on his disclosure forms regarding his wife's employment uh, and political uh, affiliations. Now, that's not required by law, is my understanding, mm-hmm. but it's something when you're at that high level within an ag- agency, particularly something like the FBI, you probably err on the side of caution and put it in there. Right. So I, I would expect that being a story uh, moving forward. Right. Uh, I'm not, I don't believe it's something Trump will dive t- too much into. Uh, you know, it's kind of low, low lying fruit, but the Republican political op- operatives of the world and Republican media are not going to forget it. And something like $100,000 in that range. Yeah, it was about 100000 So that Terry yeah. McAuliffe gave to McCabe's wife. Yeah. So McCabe is – did Trump kind of accidentally – put a Democrat on top of the FBI? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of speculation that Comey was a Republican. I, you know, I know people that have worked for him in the past, and and he probably was. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I, he's got someone who is clearly a partisan. I don't know if that – I don't know him, but I don't know if that sort of parlays into his, his view of, of the justice system and how he uh, applies the FBI resources. I think he probably couldn't do that um, because there are sort of checks and balances within the department that would – get him in yeah. serious trouble. How long do you think he lasts? Not long. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, uh, they're going to put somebody up, and there's nothing that Democrats in the Senate can do to stop it. What would you say to people who see this move by Trump and say, see, I told you that there's this smoke meant that there was fire. He's clearly covering something up here. He clearly thinks he's busted, <clears throat> and so he's trying to fire all the cops that are coming after him. What would, the, what would you say to to that I, I wouldn't read too much into it i mean this is you're within the dc fog machine where people are trying to create a political narrative to to get more to get political traction within their individual bases uh for the next election cycle um as far and as far as i know and i've read just about everything that comes out on it there is nothing linking the president to russia or russia operatives here in the united states flynn on the other hand i think that that's that case is pretty well set and mm-hmm. self-inflicted wound because if he had just filed the appropriate foreign, ag- uh, foreign agent registration forms, that no, this would be a nothing burger. But he lied mm-hmm. about it, and he, he was a dope for doing it, and he's mm-hmm. going to pay a serious price, and it's hurting the president. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's really sort of turned this town upside down, which is not hard to do, but it's right. really dysfunctional right now. Last question for me, and then we can take some from uh, Facebook if, if we have any good ones. Uh, what did what did he do? Like tell t- tell people what what did Michael Flynn do? Like what what was the error that he that he made? So the, the genesis of this is that he was a foreign agent. So under U.S. law, dating back to World War II, is if you are representing a foreign government, you actually have to file a foreign agent registration act with the Department of Justice, and, it, and within that form. It's within two weeks of you being hired. Mm -hmm. Uh, You say who you're meeting with, whether that's someone in the media or someone on Capitol Hill or within the administration, and what you're working on. And the reason why they established FARA, uh, if you can believe it, but back in World War II, there were lobbyists actually lobbying for the Nazis. So it was probably a good idea to have something like this. Now, if you're representing a a traditional client like McDonald's, you file a lobbying disclosure act, which is done quarterly, and it's not that deep. So you know, I'm working on food issues. I'm working on minimum wage. Yeah, minimum and, wage, yeah. everything. But the Foreign Agent Registration Act is has real teeth, and you have to do it. It's detailed, and you have to do it the right way. So Michael Flynn was working for the government of Turkey. He was not filing it, and that's what sort of tripped him up originally. He then went into the NSC. And he has, he has other additional levels of security that he needs to go through and, and, and transparency, and he did not disclose it. Now he's under criminal investigation. Right. And by the way, that's the way it should be. What, uh, what was he thinking? How could you – I mean, he was advising the president or the presidential campaign yeah. not to step on this Facebook question. That are he's advising the presidential campaign. He's about to be – running intelligence for the entire White House. You know, Ryan, you've been think? in this town a long time, and, you, and you, you know, sometimes these folks' heads get too big. Mm-hmm. And maybe he thought he could get away with it. Maybe he's just a dope. I mean, right. I, I mean, <laughs> maybe he had bad legal, legal counsel. Mm-hmm. It could be, or it could be a mixture of all those mm-hmm. things. But if you're, if you're talking with somebody like Erdogan, 
who is by no means a good dude. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, you're peddling his wares here on K Street and on Capitol Hill and in the White House, probably should know that you have to file the documentation to do it. And and if you have if you have a, a company set up, there was probably a lawyer that prepared it that probably is familiar with ethics mm-hmm. disclosures here and in, 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 in within the United States and probably was told to do it, but he didn't. And that wasn't even what got him fired. It was lying about his conversation yeah, with and, the Russian and, ambassador. And, and then on top of all that, he tells the vice president of the United States that this didn't happen, and when in fact it did. Okay, at least O'Connor is concerned about the different stories coming out of the White House. Trump said one thing yesterday. Everyone else in the White House, including the Vice, uh, Vice President, said something else. And then we have uh, Caroline Stark thinks Trump's trying to get impeached on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if you guys couldn't hear those questions, Caroline says Trump's trying to get impeached on purpose, which might be the most logical explanation so far. <laughs> uh, and then two, yeah, t- so talk about these conflicting explanations that you had this parade of administration officials come out and say that he was fired for his poor handling of the the Clinton email scandal, uh, which Democrats have been kind of practically calling for right after the election. And then Trump came out and said, no, I I fired him. I was just looking for a reason to fire him because I thought he was doing a terrible job and he's a grandstander. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if anything, in the last hundred days or so, is that it's he's hard to predict, and, and to <laughs> actually know why he did something uh, is even harder. Uh, you know, my my assumption is, is it just, and does it matter? I guess is the no the follow up question. No, right. it, it, no, it doesn't matter. You can right. fire him because you don't like his hair color. Right. I mean, it's not an abuse of power. He has the constitutional authority to do it, and if you don't like him, get out of here. And and I and that's you know he's a former CEO who you know takes pride in that. He likes being the big guy at the at the board table and. If someone's irritating him, he fires him. Right. And you know, and I, it, it, to dovetail on that, part of it I think is that you know he doesn't need a lot of staff. He doesn't think he needs a lot mm-hmm. of staff. And, and if you, if anybody who's worked in D.C. for a long enough time, if you're a senator or a secretary or something along those lines, they have oodles of staff that kind of you know correct the message and keep the talking mm-hmm. points and briefings. And he doesn't, and he doesn't want it. And that was part of his appeal and why he did well. Quite, quite frankly, and, and, and it's a little bit more difficult trans, you know, tra- transitioning from a campaign into running the government, and that's what we're seeing here. Right. Ryan, can you just update everybody on your job change? And they also want a, a reintroduction just so they know who they're talking to. So, oh, sure. Yeah. So, uh, yes, if you guys may have seen on Twitter or, or elsewhere, uh, I, my last day at the Huffington Post uh, as bureau chief there was Tuesday. Next Monday, I'm going to start as the Washington Bureau Chief for, for The Intercept, which uh, you guys are probably familiar with. It's a, a great publication, like extraordinary amount of talent over there. Uh, I was at the Huffington Post almost nine years. Uh, it's awfully sad, to, awfully sad to leave. I can't even imagine the place uh, without, without me there. Today's Friday, so the, I woke up the last three days and didn't go into the Huffington Post, which is a strange kind of feeling for me. Um, but I will continue here at, at TYT uh, indefinitely um, and just, just be bringing you reporting from The Intercept uh, instead of the Huffington Post. And I will certainly have a lot of correspondence from the Huffington Post uh, joining us. Um, t- so today, and this is not a Huffington Post correspondent, this is, <laughs> although I'm sure he's welcome to blog there at any time, it's Todd, again, it's Todd, Todd Bullinger, Republican uh, political consultant, former Senate staffer back Correct. in the day, and then a lobbyist, and then got caught up in the uh, Abramoff scandal and got a very intimate inside view of the uh, both the FBI and the Department of Justice. Too intimate. Yes, too intimate. Um, so w- any other questions for e- either of us? Um, well, they want, they're talking about a DNC lawsuit. Again. They want- <laughs> oh, I still have not dug into that DNC okay. lawsuit, I promise I will. I'm trying to take a little bit of a downtime in between, okay. in between jobs. If they'll he has a lot of children. Allow me that. I do have a lot of children. <laughs> And while he's looking for one, the, the one thing I did want to ask, uh, Senate Democrats are saying that until there's a special prosecutor, you know, they're going to do everything they can to kind of gum up the works 
in the, in the Senate, as somebody who's really familiar with, yeah, with I, the Senate, what could they do? What can't they do here? Yeah, yeah, well, first, let me. One of the reasons why I think getting rid of Comey is a good decision is because Chuck Schumer has lost his marbles over it. Uh, that guy <laughs> has been elect, in elected office since 1975, and quite frankly, having lived here and followed his career and everything that he's done politically and worked at bipartisan firms that supported him, I can't think of one thing that that guy has done except get reelected <laughs> and, and move his position in life. Uh, up the up up the sort of the political ladder and, and, and increase his corporate touch on the fundraising circuit, um, but there's nothing they can do to do this. I mean, there's not going to be a special prosecutor. That's that's just not going to happen. And that's because Mitch McConnell doesn't think it should happen, and therefore it won't happen. Yeah, they have Is to that... authorize it, and they have right. to authorize the funding for it, and the, and then the president would have to sign it. Right. <laughs> it's just it's just not going to happen. Uh, and then you know my take is, and I believe I commented on one of your articles a while back. Uh, when the when the House was changing their ethics mm-hmm. rules, was that, you know, it, there's enough investigations going on there. If multiple committees, there's the FBI already looking at it. How many divisions within the Department of Justice proper, main justice and their field office that are looking into it? If these folks can't get their job done, why are we paying them? Mm-hmm. Why are we paying them? So we're going to hire another special prosecutor. <laughs> I, I forget what Ken Starr was paid. Well, I mean, what was his budget? Fifty they million. They ended up spending tens of millions. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So you have all these field agents for the FBI. You have multiple prosecutors. You have multiple committees, multiple staff in every newspaper in the country looking mm-hmm. at this. And then they want to hire another lawyer with more staff, embed him somewhere in some crappy building in Washington, D.C., and flush $100 million down the tank. That's, that's nutty. It's just not going to happen. I, I haven't heard many people talk about the fact that a special prosecutor would have to be <clears throat> signed into law by President Trump. I believe Which, that is the case yeah, yeah, because it I is think, an appropriation. Right. And they um, – yeah, yeah, exactly. And they uh, – the special prosecutor law no longer exists. The independent counsel law right. was, after the Ken Starr debacle was allowed to expire. So they basically have to override his veto because I can't see a world in which Donald <laughs> Trump signs into law a prosecutor going after him unless Caroline was right that he really just wants to be impeached. He's not going to be impeached. <laughs> It had impeachment proceedings have to originate in the House. Who controls the House? It's just not going to happen. Uh, Cindy and Candace are fighting over whether uh, Bill Clinton killed Vince Foster. And, <laughs> hold on, no, okay, okay. Actually, I didn't mean to laugh. Sorry. And, uh, and Candace is saying that Bill Clinton fired the FBI director the day Vince Foster was found dead. And this proves that there's really no big deal about Trump um, firing uh, Bill Clinton. Before Todd answers that one, can I just pull apart the logical connection there? If somebody uh, committed murder and then fired the FBI director in order to cover it up, that does not mean that somebody else committing a crime later is not a big deal. In fact, it would be the precise opposite. It would be a huge deal. Not to say that that's what happened. Yeah, the Vince Foster conspiracy is one of the the longest lingering conspiracies here in Washington. Here's what we know factually. Uh, The FBI sent up a criminal referral in September of 92. Obviously, Bill Clinton won the election in November. Shortly thereafter, everything kind of went away. He killed himself, and, you know— that, you know, he was probably under a tremendous amount of stress. It's not an easy job, I would imagine, if you look at sort of, I think, what the Wall Street Journal called the Bermuda Triangle of the Clinton world. Mm-hmm. There, a lot of people have propped them up in their, in their lives and made them extremely wealthy, extremely famous, and extremely politically powerful. And then bad things happen right. <laughs> to, to those folks. Uh, even their most close to, closest advisors, like Uma Abedin, Terry McAuliffe, you know, it, it's— it's just part of the system. If you're here so long, and it happened in my case, and it happened with Jack Abramoff, if you're, if, you're, if you're involved at that high level of politics and you're the straightest shooter in the world, eventually things happen, and, and someone's taking a shot at you. or and some, You dig hard enough and long enough, you're probably going to find something. I can't imagine the stresses of being in the, in the legal right. counsel's office under a Clinton administration. It would not be a good place to be. Yeah, I do think that this, the simplest explanation is that he was under an extraordinary amount of stress. Yeah, totally. Just committed suicide. I, I don't disagree with you. And yeah. by the way, I worked on the Hill when he was impeached and was in the Senate when we tried to convict him. And, you know, it's, it's highly unlikely yeah. that there was a, a murder there. Did you think there was a chance that uh, he'd be convicted when the whole thing started? Um, convicted as an impeached he, and thrown out of office. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would have had to get to a, the necessary vote threshold in the, in the Senate. Um, I, I did not. Um, you know, I, I thought it was prosecuted fairly well, um, 
but at the end of the day, you had folks like our own Spectre, the serial flip flopper, um, and you know guys mm-hmm. like that just were not going to vote. Right. Yeah. Um, Kate Cantonella has an interesting question for you, Todd. Do you, do you think that CIA, CIA and FBI are systematically corrupt? No. Um, <laughs> if you no, they're not corrupt. I think that most of the people that go into government service are there to do a good thing and to work hard and, and, and make a career. And it is actually a good career. If you, if, you, if you don't have ambitions to make millions and millions of dollars and you want to do something that's interesting and different every day, I mean, you're not going to get a better education anywhere than at the FBI and, and, and the CIA. Do I think that sometimes the, the skis come off the rails? I mean, yeah, they can. I mean, the, the one thing that you have to be careful about, and that's why we have a, a, an open media, and that's why I think shows like this and, and sort of sort of citizen media, is to keep an eye on these things. I mean, there's nothing worse than a corrupt judiciary system. And the only way to make sure that doesn't happen is that you maintain free speech, you maintain whistleblower protections, uh, which Senator Tr- Chuck Grassley is probably one of the best in, in the country at that. And you have vigorous oversight. I know a lot of people don't like to watch congressional hearings when they call up X agency and stuff like that. But whether it's a Republican or a Democrat who's in control of the House or Senate or the White House, they should be given a hard time. Everything should be questioned because abuse of power is not what this government was designed for. And it should be protected by your elected members, members of Congress and the media. And, that's, and then it, ultimately the courts, if you feel like you've been wronged. Ryan, for you, Aaron and Jay both have the same question. Um, if not this, what could make the Russia collusion thing have more traction? Yes, I, I think the, the direction you're heading is the right one in the sense that, politically speaking, you know, forget the, the legal, moral, ethical implications, Trump went from celebrating his uh, victory in the House of Representatives of passing his uh, re- health care repeal and replace bill uh, to what you can only be described as an own goal here politically. Because now anybody who thought, anybody who wasn't a diehard Trump supporter and didn't think there was a lot going on here now is like, well, wait a minute. Maybe there actually is something going on here. And if this rolls into May 25th with Rob Quist, the Democratic bluegrass guy that's running in Montana for uh, Ryan Zinke's seat, if he upsets uh, the Republican uh, running in that race, then you have these two things coming together. Then you've got, uh, then you're heading into a couple more elections. So I think politically speaking, it was probably uh, a huge mistake for the reasons that you're kind of hinting at. But maybe you disagree. I mean, I I don't disagree with you that the timing was bad. Uh, but I think it was the right decision. Uh, I mean, it was time for him to go. Uh, I, I, that is an interesting way to look at it with some of these special elections. If if yeah. there are changes, in, in, particularly in a place like Montana, which has right. gone at their at-large seat, has been consistently Republican for a long time, um, yeah, maybe maybe there's some legs there. Uh, th- thus far, though, the special le- elections really haven't worked out the way the Democrats yeah. have wanted. So we, we're, it's yet to be seen if there's something in the ether that has really turned the, the, the needle here. And, you know, Trump's base is anywhere between 39 percent and 41 to 42 percent. Those people are with him. It's that sort of squishy sliver that gets you to a a simple majority that, you know, that are going to make the decisions both at the national level and at the individual uh, district level. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we're so far away. I I can't imagine. I don't even like talking about special elections, but I can't imagine the average voter is really that thrilled about it. Uh, actually, he's wrong. I wasn't uh, uh, charged with bribing politicians, so that's actually one not true. I actually was in tr- got in trouble for taking congressional staff to too many lunches and dinners. It's called honest services fraud, um, so that's not accurate. Well, I, I have, if, as far as listening to me, I'm a pretty experienced guy. I've never been accused of lying, and uh, and I really owe nothing to anybody in this town. So I'm just giving you my honest take. And you have a background in federal law enforcement too, right? I do not. I was actually in the military. I would, I disagree with the first part of that, but agree with the second part. I think he shot himself in the foot in the sense that somebody like McCabe and people around him are going to leak a lot more uh, than they have been in the past. But I would say don't be fooled by James Comey. He, this is a 
political operator who's been in Washington for a long time and, and rose very effectively uh, through a basic political tactics, one of which is leaking. The main thing that Democrats loved about James Comey was this kind of heart-stopping scene at the hospital where the Gonzalez was, Roberto Gonzalez, Bush's attorney general, was rushing down to the hospital to get John Ashcroft to... Ashcroft was attorney general. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ashcroft was right. Ill. And they wanted him, uh, they wanted him to sign off uh, on uh, expanding surveillance and he didn't want to do it and, J- and James Comey became this, uh, he, came, he became the guy who uh, temporarily took power because Ashcroft was was ill and Comey stood firm and said absolutely not we're not I'm not re- I'm not renewing this I'm standing my ground and he became a folk hero to, to Democrats for that how do you think that the media found out about that dramatic scene it wasn't John Ashcroft it's you know so James Comey <laughs> knows how to get the narrative that he wants out into uh, public and I think you're gonna you are gonna see You've seen some of that, and you're going to see more of it, and you're already seeing it. Uh, in fact, Trump this morning was tweeting at Comey, before you leak, uh, be careful because I might have taped our, our conversations, which, again, is hilarious to think that the president yeah, I mean, it, 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 like I mean, it's it's an open secret here in Washington that the F, one of the F, things the FBI does, not necessarily, you know, as, as far as that dramatic, that I, right. I remember that well, but if there is a case going on, they feed tidbits out to the reporters. Reporters do a lot of the, the, the digging because, quite frankly, they have better access than a lot of these agents do. And they can get people talking. And it sort of mm-hmm. it stirs the nest a little bit. And you see where things fly. And that happened with Abramoff. It's happened with the Flynn case. It's happened with just about everything that, right. that I can remember. And the, the reporters drive it. They drive the narrative. And it may not always be accurate, I mean, 100% accurate, but sort of the trend line um, um, is in the right direction. And that's how these things go. A journalistic question for you, Ryan. They want to know, why do we have to listen to a Republican on this? <laughs> well, you don't. You know, it's a free country. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Todd's uh, political analysis. Uh, I think it's important to listen to every different side because there are more than two sides when it comes to, comes to questions like this because there's internal disagreements within the Democratic Party, outside of the party, within the Republican Party, out, outside of that. But, again, you don't have to, you know. No, you don't have to listen to me. I mean, if, if 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 I were to define myself, it wouldn't even actually be Republican. It, I'd be a conservative libertarian populist. So, uh, you know, there's, there's no exact science in how you're you're labeled anymore, particularly under Trump. Uh, you know, sort of the traditional uh, neocon. I was never one. Right. Maybe time for one more. Or? Okay, Marty, ask one more. Ask one right. get, do one, and then I'll find you. Okay. Um, I got nothing else. <laughs> I've, I've kind of uh, <laughs> I've kind of figured this whole thing out. So which is true? Was it, the, was it the three, four people from the White House who said the attorney general and the deputy attorney general instigated this? Or is it, I mean, Trump said last day, I was thinking about Trump and Russia, and it's going to go on forever. Yeah, I mean, I think that getting inside Trump's head is impossible. However, I, I do think that in this case, Trump wanted him gone and decided he was going to be gone. I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. I don't disagree there. So why did they do that whole story for two days? Because they're still under the impression that they could, uh, that they're running some kind of normal operation, uh, and which they, they'd like to tell themselves that, that this is a normal presidency because they're working inside of it. Uh, and then a normal presidency, something like this would have some kind of logical and legal grounds. But they're not working in a normal presidency. They work for President Trump, and he made a decision. So... All right. Anyway, thanks so much uh, for joining us uh, and suffering through the opinions of a conservative uh, <laughs> libertarian populist and, all, and my own. Uh, look forward to seeing you again on Monday.